my set of rules to learn how do I know how to name covalent compounds. Co covalent compounds, remember, are nonmetals only, maybe a metalloid perhaps. So if the compound is made up of two nonmetals or has that metalloid in it, we're going to name the compound using numerical prefixes to tell how many there are of each part. And here's that same chart from the other day to tell you what those prefixes would be. The first nonmetal is always going to be named normally, but we'll have a prefix to say how many there are. So when I say named normally, you would say things like oxygen, not oxide, sulfur, not sulfide, nitrogen, not nitride. It's just whatever it says on the periodic table. If there's more than one, we'd have a prefix there to say how many there are. If there's only one of the first nonmetal, they drop that mono prefix. And I'll show you an example of that in just a second. The second nonmetal always 100% of the time has an eyed ending and always has a prefix to say how many there are, even if there's one. Don't have to worry about charges at all in a covalent compound. So the most common example, CO2, you guys know, CO2 is called carbon dioxide. Well, how does that fit into these rules that we see up above? That rule where it says the first nonmetal is written normally. So it's carbon, not carbide, just carbon. Now, there's only one carbon, but we don't call it monocarbon dioxide. We just call it carbon dioxide. So that's this rule right here. If there's only one of the first nonmetal, we drop that mono part. The second half of that, the dioxide part, the second nonmetal, always has an ide ending, dioxide. And we always have a prefix it, no matter what. What about CO? This is carbon monoxide. And it follows those rules there. The first nonmetal, the C, we name it normally, carbon. There's only one of them, we drop the mono. The second nonmetal, always has an eyed ending and will always have a prefix even if there's only one. Now you might be wondering why I have monoxide and not monoxide. Prefix up there says mono not mon. Um, sometimes they drop this vowel sound right here, just to make it sound prettier to the ear. I wouldn't mark it wrong if you wrote monoxide, um, but just takes a little finessing to know when they drop that vowel sound, just to make it, honestly, just to make it sound prettier. We'll see, try a couple more. That N2O5, so we're gonna write the first word normally nitrogen. We need a prefix to say how many nitrogens we've got. Two. So di nitrogen. The second nonmetal, the O, always has an eyed ending. So we would say oxide. There's five of them. So to indicate that there's five, we need the prefix for five. Pent oxide. Now up here, five, it says penta, and here I just wrote pent. So if you wrote penta oxide, I would not mark it wrong, but they drop that A just because it kind of sounds funny to have that double vowel sound back to back. Sounds a little fancier to say pentoxide instead of penta oxide. One more example, uh, the 
first one, we've got S4. So four sulfur atoms. We need the prefix for four, which is tetra. Careful, a lot of people want to say quad. Tetra. First element is always written normally, sulfur. The next one, six CLs. We need the prefix for six, hexa. And the second, nonmetal, always has an eyed ending. 